There are very few games that I consider to be a masterpiece, but I feel it is my duty to talk about the one game that has shaped my world the most. Every aspect of what I enjoy about video games in general can be found in this game. Let's go back in time. I grew up as the youngest of three brothers. We were forced to share everything. Our room, our toys, our games. Not our clothes, cause you know, I was a little too thick for them. But since we shared our consoles, we always ended up sharing more multiplayer games. Couch multiplayer games or online multiplayer games. We didn't have that many one player campaign driven games because, you know, we had to share the time in the console. That's why Smash Bros, Mario Kart, Time Splitters, and Call of Duties were a big part of my childhood. But none of these were bigger than Halo 3. Halo 3 came out at the right time, 2007. I was 12 years old and since Fortnite wasn't a game and Xbox was doing a good job at this point, everybody had Call of Duty 4 and Halo 3. While Call of Duty 4 was dope as hell, Halo just had a lot more to offer. Let me break it down into pieces so you understand. It's the grand finale, well it was supposed to be, the grand finale to an epic adventure starring Master Chief. The different worlds and enemies that you would fight against were well designed and on heroic or legendary difficulty, it was an actual challenge. But what was great was that you could play the whole game co-op, which no duh of course we did. You can read a wiki page summary of the campaign if you want a summary, just know that Chief has to stop halo rings from being used to destroy anything and everything, zombies exist, the Arbiter is your homie, and Sergeant Johnson gets betrayed by the Forge robot. It's epic and yet completely avoid and the game would still be great because everything else this game has to offer is incredible. Just know that this was before the era of microtransactions. So in order to get great skins and armors, you had to play the campaign on legendary which means these little guys would kamikaze themselves at you non-stop and one bullet would kill you. In order to get other armor you had to find these hidden skulls that are just lying there in the middle of nowhere or hidden in these places that only Sherlock Holmes would be able to find them. Thank god for the internet. I remember that in order to get the recon skin, you had to get all the achievements and by far the hardest was beating the final level without dying, all skulls on, meaning that if you died it would start all over, and you had to beat it using ghosts only with 4 people. This took hours, but the campaign was really just the appetizer. The main course was of course. Whether you just want to duke it out casually or in ranked modes, Halo 3 had it all. My love for competitive gaming came from this game. As awesome as it was to hit Grandmaster in Overwatch, hitting General was way harder. In fact, I never hit it at all. But even the non-ranked game modes were great. Do you want to play 8 players versus 8? You can. It's called Big Team Halo. Do you want to play with only shotguns and snipers? It's called Shoddy Snipers. Is it Halloween? Well guess what, there's infection game modes. You could even play split screen online. Why don't games still do this? The maps that you play on are iconic and they bring memories to anyone who sees them. I'm just going to put pictures of maps on for like a couple seconds. Tell me you didn't cry right now. Feel like you cried. We found out that we can actually still play Halo 3 online. That's right, we can play Halo 3 on an Xbox 360 online in 2019. So we did what any smart Halo fan would do. We got a free one month trial, made an account, and just played online. So all the clips you see are us playing recently, like a couple days ago. This game's it's great. I'm happy. <laughs> so upset. There was even more fun to be had in the custom games with your friends. Custom games were customizable to the point where you could change almost every aspect of the game. Infection game modes were my favorite. We had a game mode where the zombies were incredibly fast but could die in one shot. Or we had this one game mode where the zombies were actually the wardens and everybody was a prisoner trying to escape. There was Duck Hunt where the zombie was a sniper and everyone was trying to, you know, just escape through an obstacle course to the end. And then there was like weird ones like Fat Kid or just these strange infection modes. But in the end, they were all unique and all different types of games to play. There was just a lot of imagination and creativity. Red vs. Blue invented a game that was a staple of Halo 3. Ball. It's fun because you get to use a hammer! And wholesome because you get to kill Griff with it! Over and over again! <laughs> exactly! Bungie and its community worked hand in hand and it was incredible to watch. And all of this was elevated by Halo 3 had one of the best map editors, Forge. Once the new levels Foundry and Sandbox were added, the Skybox was really the limit. I remember making maps all the time. You could make race tracks, you could make maps that are just silly and fun. I managed to make Shipment from Call of Duty 4 a map in Halo. You know, not to toot my own horn, but...
In general, the goal was to make a really fun map for whatever game type you wanted to make, and the biggest goal was to end up on Bungie's favorites. Bungie would select their favorite maps, their favorite game types, their favorite pictures, and their favorite clips, and would put them all on this list of Bungie's weekly favorites. I never once achieved it, but it was always a goal of mine when making maps. Every time I get a game these days, I don't understand why they don't have a map maker. If a game that came out 12 years ago had it, I don't get why these games can't. And they had their own movie maker and editor. Back then, it was basically the entirety of YouTube in 2008. Steven! Stop that right this second! Steven! No! No! The online community for Halo 3 also felt very welcoming and not so toxic. It felt very easy to make friends online back in the day. And I was like, what, 13? No one ever called me a squeaker or anything like that. It just was a natural friendship that built with a bunch of people that could be anywhere from 13 to 24. Fun fact, before me and my wife started dating, we actually played Halo 3 together online. You see, Halo brings people together. Later on, Halo Reach came out and did improve some aspects, but changed multiplayer too drastically, trying to copy Call of Duty to an extent. And after Halo Reach, Bungie left Halo behind. Now 343 has the reins on Halo, and Halo 4 wasn't bad, but made changes that ruined Halo for me. For example, they just made infected people only have energy swords, so you couldn't play Duck Hunt or Fat Kid or any of these fun games anymore. It's like 343 didn't understand why we liked custom games in the first place. I don't know. Halo's franchise, I hope, takes steps back and leans into Halo 3 a bit more because Halo Infinite could learn that people are itching for some Halo 3 in their life. Why else do people get so excited to play the Master Chief Collection on PC? I'll give you a hint. It's not to play Halo 4. Halo 3 had so much to offer, and it has more than any game these days have to offer combined. And that is why I believe it is a masterpiece in gaming.